All right. So the next challenge that Hume is going to make to the claims to knowledge his fancy philosopher friends have offered um, is, is going to have to do with a, a distinction between the way that reality actually is and what our expectations of reality are. So Hume's going to ask us, I want you to think about some things about reality that you regard as true, things that you know about reality. And so I'm going to say things like, I know that a glass of ice water will have a lower temperature than a campfire. I know that. I also know that if I'm alive tomorrow, I will be breathing oxygen. I know this. And I know that if I shoot myself in the head with a shotgun, that's going to lead me to experience some degree of bodily harm. I know this. And Hume's going to say, well, are these statements necessarily true? Is that why you know these statements are true? You claim to know these statements are true. Is that because they're necessarily true? And we've got to be really careful here because Hume is using that word necessary in a really particular way. He means logically necessary. So what he's asking here is, are these statements on the screen here true by the same criteria and in the same way as a statement like it's either raining outside right now or it's not raining outside right now? Are these statements true by the same criteria and in the same way as a statement like when people divorce, they dissolve their marriage? And I'm going to have to say, no, they're not necessarily true like those statements are necessarily true. These seem different. And Hume's going to say, well, what makes, what leads you to believe that these statements are true? If it's not logical necessity, what leads you to believe these statements are true? And I'm going to say, because I've had these experiences. I've had lots of experience with campfires and ice water, and the pattern has been really consistent. Campfires are always a higher temperature than ice water. Every day I've been alive, and as far as I know, every day that any person's been alive is a day I've been breathing oxygen. Um, I Every day I've experienced that way. And I've seen lots of examples of what can happen to people when they shoot themselves in the head with a shotgun, and it never seems to come out, turn out very well for that person. So based on all these experiences, Hume, that's how I've come to make draw this conclusion about reality, and these are things I know about it. And then Hume's going to say this. He's going to say, if these statements aren't logically necessarily true, like the a priori statements are, then... How can they be false? And I think that's a fair question. If these aren't necessarily true by logical necessity, and they're not definitionally true, when I say that they're true statements and that they reflect my knowledge of reality, that implies that they're contingent statements. They could be false. I think they're true. I know they're true. But they could be false. And Hume's going to say, well, can you think of any way these statements could be false? And I'm going to look at them and I'm going to think, I don't think so. I, I just can't imagine how a glass of ice water is going to have a higher temperature or an equal temperature to a campfire. I, I don't know how it would be possible that I could be living tomorrow but not breathing oxygen. And Hume's going to say, well, why not? Why can't you imagine that that will be the case? And then I'm going to have to say, well, because all the experiences I've had in the past would lead me to believe that this is true about temperature of campfire and glasses of water. And all the experiences that I've had in the past tells me that I'm going to be breathing oxygen tomorrow. And Hume's going to say, so you know then that reality and the structure of reality as it's been is going to remain that way. You know that, uh, Hume says, you know that reality won't change, that the laws of nature won't change. You know this, Mr. Fancy Pants, right? That's what Hume's saying. And at some point, I'm going to have to admit, it's like, well, no, I don't know that. I just, I just kind of expect that to be the way that it is. I don't know what else I would do. Yes, I expect that the sun will rise tomorrow because it's risen every day before. Am I 100% certain that it will? I don't know about that. I mean, I suppose something could happen where the sun didn't rise tomorrow. I suppose something weird could happen in the laws of physics that changes temperature in the way that it functions. Maybe they'll invent a pill tonight um, that causes people to uh, remain alive without actually having to take in oxygen. Um, so I can see where how these statements could be false. And so Hume's going to say, so if you don't know the way that reality is going to be in a given moment, and every moment is a passing moment, how can you ever say that you know the way reality is, given that the moment you make the claim, we're in a, we're in a new moment? 
And now I feel like Hume's got me in kind of a trap, right? Because he's he's got me on this fork. It's called Hume's fork. And Hume says, there's only two types of statements we can make. We can make a priori statements. Those are the statements that are true by logical necessity. Statements like, all bachelors are unmarried men. And then we can make this other kind of statement called um, uh, synthetic statements. They seek to synthesize the way that things are with the way that we understand them to be. We synthesize a claim we make about reality with reality itself. These are a posteriori statements. These are statements that we make based on the experiences that we've had. And Hume says, these are the only two kinds of, these are the only two kinds of statements that we can make. And Hume says, these a priori ones, they're meaningless. So have fun with them, but don't think that they're ever gonna tell you anything about reality. These a posteriori statements, they may have the ability to tell you something about reality, but that's assuming that you know the way that reality is going to be. And really, only you only know the way that reality has been. So when you make claims to knowledge, Hume says, about the way that things are, that are based on the way that things have been, I don't know that you can say that's actual knowledge, Hume says. That sounds like belief. That sounds like you're expecting things to remain the same, but that you don't have anything but probability to rely on there. All right, so Hume's calling into question whether or not this one type of statement we can make that has the possibility of actually uh, being a meaningful statement, an a posteriori statement about reality, Hume's suggesting the possibility that these kind of claims might not be as reliable as we think. And if they're not, then can we really call our, can we really claim to have knowledge of the way that reality is?